Hey everybody, welcome back to 1776 or Bust. It's been a couple of days, so I haven't done any, any real videos. Um, I'm actually in the process of trying to get a couple of new products here so I can do some reviews for you. So tonight I'm actually gonna do a revisit of sorts on a pistol that for whatever reason, just doesn't seem to get any love anymore. And that of course is the Smith & Wesson M&P9. Um, uh, gun is clear, okay. Um, you know, one of the things I was looking at, I always look at the statistics of the videos that I've made before. And um, funny enough, this is one of the lowest watched videos and it's titled Smith & Wesson M&P9. And I'm trying to figure out why is there no love for this gun? You know, the gun itself, I think is, is actually very nicely, cre nicely made. I don't think there's anything that you could really necessarily complain about. Yeah, the trigger kind of is crappy in the old ones, but the new ones, in my opinion, are much better. Um, you know, I explained in the, the video that I made with it that um, comparatively speaking to uh, from this one to the old one that I used to own, this is night and day better than the old one that I used to have. Um, now, of course, some people may not be familiar with how you can tell if you actually have a newer M&P. You know, let's say you want to go and buy a used one. Uh, one of the things you want to look for is, um, again, you'd want to ask the gun shop if you could um, do a field strip on it. You know, some gun shops might be a little bit... Uh, you know, I guess antsy when people strip the guns in front of them because they may not know how to put them back. But one of the things you want to look for is the actual barrel. And um, let me see if I can find that on here. I don't even know if I, yeah, there it is. Uh, let's see if I can find, show that to you. On the barrel, let me see if I can get that to actually come in to focus here. Let's see, come on, you can do it, camera. Uh, on the barrel right there is a little bit of a dot. I don't know if you can see that right there. There's a dot there. Now that has been stamped at the factory. Now this would indicate that this is a newer bat barrel. Now the barrels themselves have improved. They have a better um, twist ratio on the barrel. So it actually makes the barrel a little bit more accurate than what the old MMPs used to be. So that's something you have to keep in mind. The old barrels um, had some accuracy issues, which I can tell you firsthand, my old barrel definitely 100% had those accuracy issues. I could not get that thing to shoot at anything that I was aiming at. Um, also, they did again, as I stated before, they thickened a lot of this area here um, and also in here. So it's a little bit thicker than it used to be. So that actually makes the trigger supposedly, again, supposedly, a little crisper on the pull and then of course on the reset. So I think they've really made a great an improvement in, in the actual firearm itself. Um, you know, one of the things that I don't like about Smith & Wesson that I'd have to say would be a big no-no for me was this gun in particular came with the, um, the magazine uh, disconnect. So whenever there's no magazine in the gun, you can't actually pull the trigger and the trigger won't go click. And I just hated that feature, so I just removed it myself. It was very easy to do. You just basically pull the pistol apart, remove your trigger assembly, and you pop out a spring, and then everything else comes out. And it was one, two, three, done, no big deal. And now, as you can see, the trigger goes bang without a magazine in it. So yeah, some people might say that's not a good idea because I could, um, you know, whatever, the warranty, this and that. But uh, to be honest with you, I don't really care. You know, I, I just want a gun that fires if there's no magazine in there, and now this does it. So. You know, I am trying to figure out why there is no love for a full-size Smith & Wesson. You know, some people like it, some people hate it, um, but I honestly think they just got a bad rap from their older guns. And I think that's gonna happen sometimes. Sometimes manufacturers rush to you know, production pistols that aren't exactly as well-made as they were hoping. And when people get that initial purchase and they take it home and they go and fire it at a range, the disappointment sets in. Next thing you know, it word of mouth travels and now everybody hates the M&P. Again, I, and am I the world's greatest fan from Smith & Wesson? No, because I've owned a few Smith & Wessons and I haven't been overall impressed with any of them. But in this case, with this m and I've been very impressed with what I've seen. Um, it shoots very well, holds very well. Uh, it's very ergonomic. Um, and for a really full-size, you know, duty type pistol, I don't really think you can go wrong with something like this. You know, it's uh, to me a little bit more ergonomic, obviously, than a Glock. You know, it is not going to be as ergonomic as, let's say, the PPQ or even the SIG, that, for that matter, the 320. But I think overall, it handles itself rather well. It's not extremely thick. It's pretty thin. Um, the bore access is not super high. It's actually relatively low. And I think overall, fit and finish is great. The um, materials that they use for the slide are wonderful. You know, there's not a lot of marking on it at all. 
Um, and this is usually being carried in the Kydex holster. So even when it's holstered in Kydex, it, it tends to not really mark or show any kind of markings on it, which is very nice. So the finish is very nice. Um, aftermarket support for M&Ps, very good. You can find a ton of accessories, holsters, sights. You can wind up getting an Apex trigger system if you like. So there's definitely plenty of things you can do for this pistol. And yet I still believe there's a lot of hate for the pistol. So, you know, again, if you're looking for a decent quality gun that, uh, in my opinion, is going to be reliable, definitely look for one of those newer Smith & Wesson M&Ps. Again, if you can, field strip it, take a look at the barrel. You'll see either one little dot there or two. Um, I believe the two dot is actually the newer or the newest versions of those barrels. And the one dot was the newer one. But, you know, supposedly there's no difference between that one dot and the two dot. Um, but... You know, again, I've really liked how this is held in my hand. I, I've shot it for, I think I put about 50 or 75 rounds in through it, so it's not that much. But overall, I handled it very well. I mean, it, it was pretty accurate, no issues with it. Again, I picked up the, um, the, uh, uh, the Hackathorn sights here, um, and I'm very happy with them. And overall, I just think it's a quality pistol. So, I mean, if you're kind of on the fence at going about something like this or a Glock 17, you know, again, it's it's going to be obviously uh, in your hands to decide which one you prefer. I owned a Glock 17 also, um, liked it, I had no issues with it, but there's just really something slick about the M&P that I like quite a bit. And this one is, again, just a huge improvement over the old one. So don't let, you know, the Smith & Wesson M&P, um, the old ones, convince you that the gun is not worth trying out or at least purchasing. Again, I've been very pleased with this purchase. I feel like I got a great deal on it. And on top of that, I think it, it shoots very well and it's very reliable. So again, if you're looking for a decent pistol, check out the M&P 9. I still think it's a worthy, valuable gun to own. Uh, and again, I, I hope you guys are having a great night and freedom is never free.